All right, we now take you to the wild, wonderful world of high school football, where we have perhaps the most bizarre story we've done on this program in about two years, very close to two years, I suspect. Basically, you you have a uh, a Sycamore High School playing IMG, or it's looking like ESPN got scammed into just a school that didn't really exist or said that they had a bunch of um, high prospect collegiate players, something of that nature. Ended up being a 58 nothing blowout. You had ESPN commentators on the call just pretty early, like, yo, what is this? This is not a competitive match at all. How, how did this happen? Drink, I, that's about all I can say up, up on it up front. Please take it away and tell us what's going on here. So I, <laughs> so I, I can't quite say the ESPN commentator's name, but the is commentator it, said – Lugan Bill? No, it wasn't Luganville. It was it was it, it started with an A, like it was ever something, something like that. It's a guy that I I don't hear much. I know Tom Luganville, you know what I mean. But it was another guy. Um, and like at first I'm hearing this because I was actually I can't make this up. I had actually tuned into the game a little bit, and then I kind of was like, Yo, IMG, I know what they're about. I don't know who this other team is, but I, IMG is a powerhouse. Like. This, this school is for real. You know, you got certain schools, IMG, Amer American Heritage, um, um, Mata Day out of California, you know, et cetera. You got, you know, powerhouses across the nation. So I was like, all right, whatever. I didn't think much of it. They, they went out there and smoked them. And then I, I, I hear the, the announcers is like, listen, hold up. This team told us they had multiple Division I prospects. And I'm searching, I'm scamming this roster. And I don't see not a one. I don't know. I, I think we've been lied to. But what really got me was when I seen, I think it was his number was like number 58. He's laying out there on the field. Oh, my leg coach. And ESPN is like, we don't even got a number 58 on the roster right here. Like, who is this dude? And I just lost it. I was like, what is this? Like, so I had to ask myself. ESPN, worldwide leader of sports, this big conglomerate owned by Disney, partnered with CBS, all these big time deals, right? How did this little school out of Ohio, how did they get away with this? And then I asked myself, like, when the last time we had somebody scam a real deal organization like this? And I had to go back to 1996, John Spanos Jr. For those that don't know, John Spanos was a guy from Texas that somehow finagled his way to temporarily owning the New York Islanders in 1996. Basically, he lied about a bunch of capital he didn't have. He rubbed shoulders with the right person, got to drop the right name, got the bank to say, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll approve $100 million. Yeah, we'll approve, you know, whatever. Long story short, my man wasn't even worth 100 grand less known, you know, two billion or whatever they thought he was worth to actually be the owner of the New York Islanders. So that was like known as one of the biggest scams known to man because one guy duped the whole NHL. This guy somehow got past the NHL, then got to the New York Islanders. Nobody did their homework and they pretty much gave ownership to the team to a, a common guy that shouldn't been there. All he wanted to do was party and fly on the, the team jet. Now, fast forward to this scam. These dudes out here, from what I hear, the head coach is a convicted felon, which, listen, on the surface, I don't really, like, care about that because a convicted felon could come back and change his life and be the, the, Nick, the best thing since sliced bread. So... I don't want to, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to harp on that. The reason you have to say something about it now is because that's just one of the many things that's wrong with this program, right? Um, you got players that was over age, they said. They, they, uh, ESPN said they dived into that. They had players that, that seemed to be over age. You had players out there on the field that was not on the roster, like I said earlier. You had players where they was making up stuff saying, hey, this is a Division One guy. Where? Like, what? where's the stats? Oh, hey, 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 we're going to get to that. Not only, in my opinion, not only did ESPN get duped, I feel like these other schools got duped. And um, I was reading an article. 
the next game they were supposed to play is against Duncanville, I think is how you say it's the school. This school has some powerhouses. Alabama, they recruited a, a couple of guys out of this school. This school is a real school. And, and they canceled their game just because, like, people laugh when you hear the announcer say, hey, this is a health and safety protocol thing. It really is. Because I don't know if half of them dudes out there really was out there to play football. I just think they want to get on ESPN. So they suited up and went out there and got on ESPN. And let me mind you, if it wasn't for them being on ESPN, they could have very well got away with whatever they was doing. It, the only reason they got caught is because you, you decided to go on a national televised channel and play a national televised game. And then people start put they start connecting the dots like, oh, look, wait a minute. What we're doing here? So that's I think that's where they went wrong. Right. And then. Listen, first and foremost, right? I got I got to ask ESPN who, who's doing the research around here. How how did you let a, a convicted felon head coach and his organization outmaneuver you like that? ESPN, you oh so we just let anybody on ESPN. Well, if that's the case, I need y'all to come on here and live stream one of our shows. Then since you just letting everybody on there, let's hey, go. Hey, Hey, they, hey, I can make up some credentials too. Hey, J credentials might be the real deal, but I I make up some stuff. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I got a PhD. Um, yo, I I used to work at ESPN. I used I'm to work not, at Fox Sports One. I'm nationally <laughs> syndicated. Let's go. Yo, hey, let me tell you something. Hey, I got a couple of channels on, uh, all over. You know, I, I can make up some stuff too if that's what we're doing. I think this is this was embarrassing for ESPN. I'm I'm gonna keep it real. I think. When it's all said and done, this is what's embarrassing for ESPN. Because why, why would you let a team like that on TV if they don't supposed to be on TV? Don't sit here and say, oh, oh we got, I, I mean, you did get duped, but this is outrageous. This team shouldn't be on the field. You're right. And this team also shouldn't be on the TV either, but you, you got them on now. But, you know, you got Coastal Carolina on ESPN Plus, whatever. So, um, <laughs> you know, um, and then, you know, I just, I, I, I lost my train of thought, but either way, like, I, on the positive side of this, right, I think high school football, can they can use this for some momentum. Because I haven't heard of high school, as good as IMG is, as good as Amer American Heritage is, as good as um, Modern Day is, as good as Hoover, like, it's been a while since high school football has been a national subject like this. You know, if if I'm a team, I'm not particularly in love with, with the way Bishop Sycamore slid slither on into the picture. But I'm not, you know, I might be like, hold up. This team probably the most popular high school team right now in the nation because of the crap they pulling. It might be a chance to get us a little high school football shine here. So I'm going to throw that out there. The, you know, you sometimes you got to take the bad with the good and, you know, it might be something in there, but with all that said, Jay, listen, here's the deal. Like I said, Bishop Sycamore, this has to be, this has to be the biggest scam on a large scale of sports since John Spanos did that pull that crap with the New York Islanders back in '96. So I don't know, man, but I tell you this, ESPN, this this ain't it. You 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 pay all this money for these these researchers and these analysts and this this that and the third, and you get duped by a team with a you know. A head coach that's questionable, players that's questionable, players that's not even on the roster. I matter of fact, I don't even think this Bishop Sycamore team had a medical um personnel. I seen a chick out there, she looking like she was the like water girl slash um doc. She looked lost <laughs> in the sauce. I see the head coach over there looking at the kid on the ground, or grown man, because I don't even know if he's really a kid. I see him looking on the, looking at this guy like, hey man, you gonna get up. They had a random lady just standing there. I, I still I don't know if that was his mom, sister, daughter. I don't know who that was. It's a random lady on the field just standing there. She's absolutely no help at all. She's just standing there. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, what are we doing? Like, with that said, hey, shouts out to Bishop Sycamore for being able to get away with the scam of the at least 2021. Yeah, shouts out to them. Um. This was a scam at a high proportion here. 
So shouts out to them. But at the end of the day, I'm I'm hoping ESPN tighten up the screws and um let's let us let us not have this happen again for uh, high school football. You never heard of some of these places you're getting into the American heritage and all the high school football. I really ain't you know got into it at all. It's the first high school football saying we done. Might be, I don't know when's the next time we can get into it. But you know, uh, a couple of things that stand out to me. Um, one of the things I read early on, it was kind of odd. Uh, they played this uh, IMG on on the, what, Sunday, I believe. They had just played another team in Pennsylvania on two, Friday, two days prior. Which right. was kind of odd. And I guess uh, Paragon was, they were the ones who were kind of in with ESPN getting them on so on the network or whatever. And they was like, hey, if we'd have known that they played on Friday, we wouldn't have put them on. Well, why didn't you know they played on Friday? Could exactly. you tell us that, please? Um, so... You know, and then, you know, another thing that I just noticed was looking through this SB Nation coverage is, um, you know, because obviously people start asking questions and wondering about them now that, you know, it seemed like it's kind of a joke. They got a picture. They got two addresses that go, <laughs> are like on with the team and they got a picture of one of them <laughs> describe it as a duplex for the school address. And then the other one is a library somewhere. So it just it does it does bring the question. How did how you get this wrong? And I, I'm not I don't want to pick on ESPN. You know, I can do that anytime here lately. But they obviously not the only ones that, you know, look kind of look pretty bad in this. But they are the biggest like kind of entity involved. So obviously they're going to get some of the heat. And uh, just just as an aside to this, you know, I don't know what I don't know what they're doing over there at ESPN. But I do know. But I do know, you know, you got the whole Rachel Nichols, Maria Taylor thing going on to where Rachel Nichols says something on a hot mic that was recorded and you got it, you got that going on. And as it turns out, you can't keep either one of them employees. We know, we know ESPN look like they got a talent, they got a problem keeping talent. I'm just going to call it what it is. It looked like they having a problem with that. And then, you know, you know, I mentioned something earlier about, you know, the top story on the page. I'm not going to get into it at all. But I think there's plenty of stuff going on in the world of sports that that probably don't need think, to be the lead. I'm just saying. I, I, I think the listeners and the watchers want to know what you what you um, alluding to right there. I don't want to get into it. I, I really, that's <laughs> gonna that's gonna put me in all types of a bad mood. But uh, listen, listen. I, the the point I have with kind of saying that to you is, if you're and this is this is again this is kind of a, just a a cultural problem in general, not just ESPN and sports. But when you sit around here just meddling in all types of foolishness that really ain't helping you, ESPN is supposed to be the worldwide leader in sports. You don't look like the worldwide leader in sports when you let this happen, when maybe you might be a wee bit distracted by other things that don't amount to a hill of beans. So, I, you know, ESPN, they got to get together. They got to do better. Um, it's not a good look. When the commentators, like, what, I don't know, 10 minutes in or whatever it was, they're like, wait a minute, this look like a racket right here. This ain't right. <laughs> these kids, they don't got, we was promised all these uh, Division One prospects, we're going to have to make up a new division because we can't even find them. You know, we don't even know what this is. And you you talking to, they got a, a, a water girl for a doctor and a, Yo. You know, looking like that grown men are playing, running, Bro. I don't know, man. This, this is this, this this is terrible. It's just a bad. You, know, you can't you can't be the worldwide leader in sports and let this happen. So, I mean, the message is quite clear. Won't you get serious about sports, please? Let's get serious about sports. I know you're doing the activism and all the other stuff on the side, but keep the main thing the main thing, as Michael Jordan once said, I believe, or some, somebody said it. Keep the main yeah, thing Michael the main Jordan, thing because yeah. they not they not doing that.